14 million people visit Berlin, Germany's capital, every year. They are attracted by an abundance of history, clubs, parks, museums, and alternative subcultures. If Berliners are asked to describe the unique charm, a common response is a quote from an ex-mayor who called the city Arm aber sexy, which translates to poor but sexy. The city has an appeal in the mind of many people that sets it apart from other European capitals. But why did Berlin develop so differently? Berlin was on the path to becoming a typical capital like London or Paris at the beginning of the 20th century a central hub for the country's economy, culture, and politics. The city changed from a boring Prussian barrack city to a pulsating metropolis surrounded by industrial areas with smoking chimneys. At the end of the 19th century, 1.5 million people lived here. Berlin liked its role as the youngest and most modern European metropolis, as Chicago on the spree. But this development was cut short by the fall of the Weimar Republic and the succeeding defeat of the Third Reich in 1945. At the Conference of Yalta, the Allies decided to not only separate Germany in four sectors, but its capital as well. So what actually happens when a capital is separated? At first, nothing much. The city lay in rubble, and people all over were busy with more existential problems. But then, slowly, the difference in development between the socialist East and the capitalist West started to show. The special position of Berlin as an island within the Soviet bloc became an issue not only for the people living within the city, but also on the stage of Cold War politics. In one of the first major escalations of the Cold War, the Soviet Union blocked all transports through their territory to West Berlin in order to gain full control of the city. The blockade failed due to the airlift established by the American, British, and Australian air forces and was lifted only a year later. Fields in the Western Zone. In the first three days, 500 landings were achieved, but with the aid of the United States Air Force, the number of flights rose by October to 600 per day. Sunderland flying boats of Coastal Command were ordered in to supplement the land-based planes. These took off from the Elbe at Hamburg and came down on one of Berlin's lakes. Food, still more food, and raw materials had to be poured across the aerial bridge into the blockaded city. West Berlin stayed in Allied hands and started to develop into a showcase of the capitalist promise of freedom. The difference was palpable. While the general background noise in West German cities was dominated by the noise of traffic, in East German cities it was quiet, apart from a two-stroke chugging by every now and then. While West Berlin was brightly lit in the evenings, the eastern half of the city sank into darkness. In the years following the blockade, the constant standoff of the two societal models in the city led to an increasing number of people choosing to leave the socialist East. Berlin became the gateway for those Germans. In 1960 alone, hundreds of thousands of people fled the GDR to the West. Hoping the population would be distracted by the weekend, SED party leader Walter Ulbricht gave the order to seal off the sector border in Berlin on the night of Sunday, August 13, 1961. The SED leadership received political backing from the Warsaw Pact states. Streets were torn open, concrete pillars were driven in, and barbed wire fences were put up. The East German police and military began to hermetically seal off the borders to the Soviet sector. On the West Berlin side, the police shielded the border installations from the unsettled population. A few hours later, East German news broadcasts proclaimed that the Communist Party SED, had separated the areas of Germany and sectors of Berlin occupied by the Western Allies with a so-called anti-fascist protective wall. Berlin was divided into two halves. From 1961 until 1989, a four-meter-high wall separated a million East Berliners from the then 2.3 million inhabitants of West Berlin. 
Whisperlin was walled in by 111.9 kilometers of walls and wire mesh fencing, an island within the Soviet bloc. In the first days after the construction of the wall, the atmosphere was tense. There were many open questions. How would the population react? How would the Allies respond? But the Western powers did nothing, fearing an escalation could lead to another world war. The American president, John F. Kennedy, summed up the Allied position when he said, Not a very nice situation, but a thousand times better than war. Within a few days, hollow blocks and concrete piles also marked the inner German border, which stretched for almost 1,400 kilometers from the Bay of Lübeck to the German-Czech border at Hof. Border soldiers had strict orders to shoot any border violators to prevent them from fleeing. On August 24, 1961, the first person was killed in the attempt to overcome the Berlin Wall. To this day, there are no exact numbers of wall victims and people who died trying to escape at the border. But at least 136 people died trying to escape East Germany at the Berlin Wall. In addition, at least 251 people died during or after controls at Berlin border crossings, many of them as a result of a heart attack. With the construction of the Berlin Wall on August 13, 1961, the catchphrase of the Iron Curtain, coined by Winston Churchill, took shape. For 28 years, the wall cemented the division of Germany and Europe. By the time it fell in 1989, it had changed the way the country and its former capital looked completely. While other European capitals, like London and Paris, were fully developed by the time, Berlin only just started that process in the 90s. The Berlin Wall and the associated death zone left a swath of emptiness in the middle of the city that took till today to develop. There was an abundance of empty apartments that attracted another generation of artists to move to the reunified capital. A good example of this development is the Mauer Park, literally translated to Wall Park. From a former death zone, it has become a hub for tourists and Berliners alike. One could say that the city's separation and position as an isolated island within the Soviet bloc hampered the urban development in a way that made, and till today, make Berlin what it is. Hit the like button and subscribe to our channel to support our work.